Welcome, builders of the internet. My name is Jessa and I work as a quantity surveyor in the construction industry. As you may or may not know, many projects in the industry tend to run over budget and cost more than originally anticipated. So today I'll be talking about one of the ways that quantity surveyors can be involved in the process to help make sure that projects are still good value for money. In particular, I'll define what value is, discuss value engineering, value management and their benefits, and what's involved in the process. As always, you can find my timestamps and sources in the description. Is building on my mind. What is value? In short, value compares the amount that something is worth to the money it costs. So what do you get versus what you pay out? In construction, value is finding the balance between quality and cost in a project, assessing how well a project meets a client's requirements in relation to the resources needed to achieve these goals. Value is mainly considered from the client's perspective, that is, the people who want the project to be done in the first place and are likely going to be the ones that are paying for it too. The costs in this context aren't only related to the project itself, it's more important to consider the long-term costs, such as expenses that come with operating and maintaining the building, how frequently items will need to be replaced or repaired, and so on. Hence why the cheapest available materials may not have the best value in the long term, especially if they don't perform or last as well as they are slightly more expensive and better quality alternatives. What is value engineering? Value engineering aims to achieve the same function of a building or part of building, but by utilising alternative means to get there. This can result in the project being cheaper overall. It was originally developed in the United States in the 1940s and 50s after World War II, when materials for manufacturing products were in short supply. This motivated people to consider different solutions, coming up with creative ideas for other materials and designs to get to the same result. Ideally, this would result in better performance and a lower cost overall. In the UK, a slightly different procedure called value management was also developed in the 1980s and 90s. This is a broader process, exploring how to provide good value for projects at very early stages, right when the brief and design is being established. Once designs and specifications have been developed, that's when the value engineering process begins. Benefits there are multiple benefits that can come from value engineering and value management exercises, such as reducing project cost, encouraging innovation and efficiency, and providing a good basis for communication and teamwork. You tend to find that construction designs are based on previous projects and prior knowledge, which will usually have some room for improvement or adaptation to better suit the current situation. One useful example for this is with the changing office culture in modern environments. Whilst traditionally you would have one desk per person, nowadays a lot of companies are adopting a more flexible approach with more hot desks and collaboration space. This is particularly helpful with the current nature of work where more people are able to work from home and have specific purposes when coming into the office, say to meet and collaborate with their colleagues. Some companies have therefore been able to reduce the number of permanent desks and facilities, which has helped meet the office's requirements without making big compromises on the functionality of the workspace. It's also important to remember that just undertaking these value engineering and value management studies can cost large sums of money and time in itself. Say, for example, you get a specialised value engineer coming in, they have to spend time learning about the project requirements and analysing areas for improvement. And even if this isn't the case and you use the existing design team, it still utilises time and resource in getting the team together to come up with solutions. The earlier these solutions are found, the better really, because less time is wasted on areas that could be changed or removed from the project in the future. As per this graph, you can see that the expense or how much money you have to spend to make these changes possible can have a higher impact in the later stages of the project, so may be less feasible overall. The process. Both value engineering and value management techniques have five similar steps, namely one, understanding the problem, two, identifying different solutions, 
three, evaluating these solutions, four, developing the most likely solutions, and five, making recommendations. Understanding the problem. Everyone involved in the value engineering process needs to know exactly what the issue is and what are the realistic constraints for coming up with solutions. Everyone needs to understand what the requirements are and which areas are fundamental to the project so that these functions are not compromised nor taking away from what the client actually wants to achieve. Identifying different solutions. This is a broader exercise where the team can get together and brainstorm alternative solutions. At this stage, it's coming up with as many ideas as possible and is usually done as a workshop. Evaluating different solutions. When all of these ideas have been collated, it's then worth evaluating how feasible and achievable these options are. Sometimes it can be quite easy to discount an option that would simply be too expensive or not perform as required. But other times you may find that there needs to be a more in-depth investigation before they're assessed properly. The worthwhile options at this stage would then be put into a short list of potential solutions. So us quantity surveyors will have quite an important role here to help identify the estimated costs for each of the options. Developing shortlisted solutions. Once the shortlist has been made, the solutions are scrutinized in further detail, which usually involves additional analysis to understand each option's costs and associated benefits. This stage can have lots of further iterations of refining the shortlist and could involve more individual work outside of the workshops. Making recommendations. This last stage is when the solutions have been eventually whittled down to a clear favorite or at least a few equally good solutions for a particular problematic area of the project. From the information gathered from previous stages, a recommendation can be made, usually in the form of a report, to describe the preferred solution to increase the value of the project. Thanks for watching this video. Oftentimes in construction, when there are value engineering exercises, this often results in slashing costs and getting rid of items altogether. Whilst this does make the project cheaper, it usually does not increase the value because the client isn't exactly getting what they originally wanted and they're often having to make compromises on what they actually get. The phrase, you get what you pay for, can ring so true in construction, where the cheapest options can be less durable or not perform so well. That's why it's important to consider the whole life of the building rather than what it just costs to build it in the first place. If you get the cheapest materials and end up having to replace or repair these features every few years, it's arguably less value for money than just spending a little bit more up front and not needing to pay so much for maintenance and repair later. Anyway, that's all I have to say about construction for now. I hope it helped build on your mind. Thanks for watching this channel, it's building on my mind. Check out my other videos, but first hit the bell and comment, like, subscribe. These are really helps with the app.